report to cloud and admitting everyone. Have a good one. I'm here. All right. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome. <clears throat> welcome, welcome. This is our, uh, we should be keeping track of how many this is. I don't know what number we're on. <laughs> Tutorial Tuesdays. <laughs> We've done quite a few now, so. Yeah. <laughs> yes, this is um, Weaving in Ends. And we're just giving people a few more minutes to get on and then we'll get going. Um, welcome, welcome. Please uh, post any questions in the chat um, or raise your hand. We'll try to get to people. Uh, turn on your cameras if you're comfortable. We like to see faces. Um, and then we'll get started in just a minute. <clears throat> All right. We, um, like I said, we're doing uh, weaving in ends today, which you know, at first I was like, oh my goodness, this is the easiest topic that we've done yet because the other topics like brioche and even seaming and things are a little bit more involved. But as I was like preparing, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's actually a lot. <laughs> so, um, so take what you can and we are recording these uh, sessions. So if you wanna go back later, you can go and, and you know, check them out again, um, but, Without further ado, I guess I'll get started. I'm Suzanne Nielsen. Um, I'm a rep for Zen Yarn Garden and I also do some patterns. Yeah, let us know where you're from. Some people are starting to post in the chat where they're from. So we have like Nevada and Ohio. Hi, hi. <laughs> um, I'm in California right now, but not for long, we're moving. <laughs> um, and Nick is with us too. She is gonna be keeping an eye on the chat and, uh, and helping out and um, you know, just helping all, doing all the things. Um, it's been really fun doing these tutorials. We switch back and forth who's leading them. So um, we want to say hi, Anik. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, great. All right. We're going to get started without further ado. Um, I have a, my hands here, which will spotlight. So hi, hi, oh, lots of different areas. It's so fun to see. All right, here's my hands. So I have this little swatch, which we're gonna show um, in different ways. So weaving and ends. Um, really, I, like I said, as I started thinking about this, there's actually quite an awful lot to cover. Um, so I'm gonna go over to some really basic points that are important to keep in mind, but also keep in mind that there's just a, always a lot of different ways to do things. <laughs> um, but one thing to think about when, when weaving in ends is your fabric. And so your fabric is a lot more, usually a lot more straight this way than it is long ways. Um, so that's like one thing to keep in mind when you're deciding how to weave in your ends. Um, and let's see, what I'm gonna do is weave in ends um, weave in ends with my a uh, different color just so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing um but obviously you know normally you just try to weave in on the matching color so I'm, first I'm going to do traditional weaving in ends with a needle but um after after the first intermission or <laughs> break I guess I'm going to show you another way to weave them in as you go while you're knitting um but one one little trick um, that is from sewing, I think, is that to, just to get your darning needle, the yarn in your darning needle, sometimes it's a little hard to just poke it through like this. Um, so I, I learned this, you know, at some point, like later in my was necessary. Um, but you put your nail in and pin, or your needle in and pinch, um, and then you can just really easily push it through. So. That's another little trick. I don't know. Do you do that, Nick, or is that I do? I do. Is that just common? Maybe that's common, but <laughs> hopefully somebody else like me didn't know that that was a good way to do it. Um, so I'm going to pretend like this is the right side of my work, um, and we're always going to, of course, weave in ends on the wrong side of your work if you've got it. Um, if you don't, then you have to choose which which one to do. But um, first, we're going to start on a. Um, um, uh, this is garter stitch. Um, so uh, there's a couple different ways. One, you can um, stay, you can 
go up through the bumps. So you would just pick the bumps here and go up. Um, now I'm going to stress this a couple of times, but the the trick mostly to, to knitting or to weaving it in and in, in ends is to always go one direction and then go back the opposite direction, and that really helps lock things in. Um, but this is one way. So in garter stitch, I'm just um, on the wrong side of the work, um, going under bumps. Uh, weaving up and down. So we will take a look at what that looks like on both sides. Um, it's you also want to make sure that after you weave in your ends, you stretch your fabric um, because otherwise you're gonna the ends are gonna pop out. <laughs> um, but we'll take a look on this side and it doesn't camouflage too well because I am using that red yarn. But if I was using, a yarn that was the same color that would camouflage really, really well. Um, so that is one way. Let's see. Um, I just saw a, a question come up. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, in the gaps. So Nick answered with the question was, are we staying um, in the stitch or, or in the gaps? Um, you know, th there's different different ways to do it. Also, if you only have like one row of the color that you're working on, you can go ahead and stay, stay in one row. Um, so you could, I could like go through this bump and then back up through this bump and then back down. Um, and then I always like, you know, pull things out here. All right. So I, I have a lot to get through. So I'm going to move on just to some other techniques. Um, is, OK, next question. How do you cut off uh, the yarn at the end? Um, yeah, let's see. So like after you're done weaving it in, as long as you've like gone back and forth um, in the opposite direction a couple of times, then you just cut the yarn off close to um, close to the end like that. Um, the other thing to remember when you're weaving in ends is it's, if you're gonna, it's always better to weave them in after you block, um, because then your, your fabric can change a lot after you block. Um, so that's kind of the general rule, but I have to admit, I don't always follow that rule. Usually I weave in my ends before. Or at least you wait until you've blocked it to cut close right. to your, your right like you can leave about an inch or two um and then when yeah. you cut block and then and yeah. then you can cut them because <laughs> otherwise what would happen like this say you know if i pull this did you see that little end just pop out um which you know if you've if you've given yourself enough room isn't too big of a problem and that's why we want to go back and forth but um but yeah you do want to stretch your fabric because your fabric is going to stretch a lot um all right, I am gonna move on to another section here. This one is um, stockinette. So in stockinette, I often like to go um, a bit diagonal. So I'll kind of follow these bumps and it depends. Like sometimes I, I do find it good to split the yarn um, when you're weaving in ends because then it really stays hidden um, if, you, if you're like, really, really need your yarn to stay hidden. You can always use your um, needle and, and weave it where you're gonna weave it and then check. And if you can't see your needle very much on the right side, then you're not gonna see your yarn really at all. So that's one check to make sure, but I like to go on the diagonal, um, but then always, always go back the opposite direction. Now I'm also going to show you a trick if um, if you're let's pretend that I only have that much tail left and I want to like go back the other direction. Well, what I'm going to do is before I um, thread the yarn through my darning needle, I'm going to go ahead and put the darning needle where it would go. So, uh, of course, let me. Also a seamstress's trick. <laughs> is that a seamstress trick? It is a seamstress trick. 
All right, so there we, we spread, or I you know put the needle through, and now I'll go ahead and put my, um, my yarn through the, the needle and pull. The other trick is when you're going back the opposite direction, always um, brace your yarn that's already woven. So I'm gonna pinch this with my thumb. Here's where I really wish I had nice nails like a Nick. Um, but anyway, pinch this, pinch this so that it doesn't um, pull too much because you are like, it does take a little bit of effort to pull it through there. Um, and you don't want this yarn to pull so much that it like does that, um, pulls it too tight. So you always just make sure that you, you know, stretch it out. Um, so this is a really good one because, um, you know, you, it, it's, I don't know, just <laughs> it goes diagonal. And it's not too visible. If I, if I didn't have pulled it, <laughs> it wouldn't be that visible from the right side, especially if it was in the same color. Um, so I think it, it looks pretty good. Um, and your ends are gonna walk. You can always like go back and forth and then back. Um, but yeah, on the, on, the, on the wrong side of the work, if you've got a wrong side. Um, now in, in ribbing, I always um, choose the the knit rib that I see. Um, let's see, I'm I'm uh, I'm missing some of these questions in the chat, so maybe Nick, you can interrupt me if there's one that I should address right now. <laughs> um, I think a, a question from Barbara is: one side of the eye of the needle larger than the other side for the purposes of threading? I've never noticed. I've never noticed that. That's a good invention. Maybe that would work. <laughs> um, yeah, I I haven't noticed. I don't think this one is. Um, you know, but I, there are you know fancy needles that are like basically a giant eye, like the entire needle is an eye. Um, that are for like a bulkier yarn, so you can keep an eye out for those kinds of things if you're having a lot of trouble um, threading your needle. But this is a worsted weight yarn, and this is just kind of your standard darning needle. Um, and I, I don't have too much problem. I use this one for most everything. Um, we also so, got a question of um, what color is the sample that your, your knitting is done in? This one is um, black pearl, I think. It looks, it looks like black pearl. It's either black pearl or, or um, moose. What's the one? Black, black moose. moose. Black moose or black pearl. <laughs> black pearl. <Yes. laughs> and then this is uh, fire red, which is another favorite. I love it. I have a. a I'm pretty sure that's black and... pearl because black moose is actually dark brown. So. Okay. Black pearl. Okay. Black pearl. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So if oh, you're in. Room... by Roxanne. <laughs> Yay. Okay. We have the. We have it from the source. <laughs> Um, all right, so if you're in ribbing, then again, on the wrong side, and ribbing, I just always find it really easily easy to um, kind of spiral up the, um, the knits. So I, I did that like little spiral, pull it through, and then again, you know, do a U-turn and go back down. And because it's ribbing, um, especially this, you know, hides from the wrong, from the right side. But again, brace, brace your U-turn before you pull it back down and then pull it and don't, don't pull it too snugly. Um, otherwise you'll get distortion at this end. So let's take a look at that on the right side. Ah, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, that looks pretty good on the right side because you're hiding it in the, you know, in the troughs of the, the pearl stitches. So when you're when you're on in ribbing just um on the wrong side the the what looks like knits will be that trough so that's easy to hide in um then this one maybe is a, a little bit advanced um i'm checking our time um seed stitch um so again there's just a couple different things you can do for seed stitch um Let's see. Let's see, I see a question. Um, 
Yeah, uh, duplicate stitch, I, I see. Um, duplicate stitch just means you're like following the stitch. So you're kind of doubling up exactly where it was. Um, so like if this, I did a duplicate stitch here, I would just follow, like follow one yarn. So I'm, I'm seeing this, I'm gonna do a duplicate stitch right here. Um, go. So I'm making my yarn go the same path that, um, that that stitch did. So you can see here, I just followed that stitch. And then what you would keep doing is following that yarn. Um, and this is, a, this is a fine method to use too. Um, it does, I find it, like it's a little bit bulkier just in that one area. Um, yeah, I find that it works well, especially when you've got a lot of color work with just small sections of yes. color where you, you can duplicate stitch just behind that little square of color. Right, yeah. To just, really, really hide them you from- You need to really from. hide it. And we, yeah. we were, as we were just, right before we started this, we were thinking, gosh, we can have an advanced weaving in session yeah. to like, <laughs> color work in lace. Um, you know, there's a lot of other tips that we could do, but I'm really quick going to show you in, um, actually I'll just pull that out, um, in seed stitch. Um, so one way to do it would be to kind of go up to, you know, these, uh, the seed stitch kind of bumps and kind of follow it, follow them diagonally up. This is where I'm doing it with where I'm not um, not not splitting the yarn. I might, depending on how you know seamless I wanted it to look, I might split the yarn if I was on this side. Um, but again, do kind of a weaving, and then I would kind of snake it back also. So again, sometimes and then go backwards through the bumps on the wrong side. All right, let's take a look at that. Pull your fabric, make sure it's not pulled too much and can't really see it even though it's a completely different color. <laughs> um, so that is a good one. Um, all right, and then like I said, like once you've gone back and forth a couple times, you really, you just clip your yarn. Um, and, and yeah. <laughs> All right. Crocheting, yes, crocheting. We could do a whole other session on crocheting too, but I would follow the kind of same principles. So hide your yarn on the wrong side and crocheting, it's a little bit easier because you have like some thicker areas to go through, but really just make sure you like go one direction, do a U-turn and come back the other direction, um, you know, and do that like two or three times to, um, to really secure it in. Um, a lot right. of crochets will, will actually like when they've got, you know, four or five single crochets or whatever, they'll, they'll like weave it in as they go. Often. Yeah, That's yeah. You what can, I do you when can I crochet. hide it in that. Um, my terminology, I'm not going to find it, but yeah, like as you're, you know, pulling up the yarn on that first pull up, it can you can kind of hide it along there. Um, but yes, um, so uh, um, Karen just said it is a little harder because you have like these bigger gaps in crochet. So really, with crocheting, we could talk about it more like you have to do for lace, um, which maybe if I have a chance, I'll show you how to, you know, just talk about how to weave it in. Maybe for um, next time. <laughs> yes, maybe for next time. I do have a lot to cover, but we have a short intermission here um, yes. because a Zen Yarn Garden is, um, you know, sponsoring these um, and they are, they are giving 20% off just for you know, showing up at our tutorial Tuesdays. Um, so we just highlighted the code, it is weaving. Um, so you can use that code for 20% off anything on the site. We do have a lot of fun things on the site like kits and these knit alongs. And we do have one more coming up. I don't know if it's too late to join it, but. Um, it'd be too late to join in, to get the yarn at 
the right time because we start May 2nd. Yeah, um, and then you, we Warrior. record those sessions too. So you could join us and then you can watch them later if you wanted to. But that yeah. one is Rainbow Warrior. But today I get to show you my um, super breezy talk, which is, um, if you can see, this is just, you know, since it's getting to be kind of spring time, um, it's a, just an, a very nice, easy, airy top. But the fun thing is that you can wear it um, as, a, as a top, obviously over something, unless you're really brave. Um, or you can actually wear it as a cowl. And I often wear it as a cowl. So in these spring weathers, if you need a little something extra to wear, you can wear it as a cowl to keep warm. And then in the summer, you can just wear it as a shirt um, or you can even wear it as a shrug. Um, and this one is knit um, with just one skein, one uh, of the Lux blanks or cakes. Um, but yeah, you can wear it as a shrug too. Um, so this one is, like I said, one of the Lux blanks. Um, from Zen Yarn Garden. This one is called uh, Razzle Dazzle, I think is this colorway. Um, and do you wanna talk any more about the yarn or, um, I don't know, we, we didn't really prepare this, but <laughs> it's it's one of our favorites. <laughs> definitely Desert Island yarn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, and there's lots of really good colors. I actually have another one knit up. This is, um, this is called Luminous, this colorway. And this one, it's, it's, the pattern is written in three different sizes. This one is um, up to the 56 inch bust. Um, and they all just use one, one, uh, whatever, cake, skein, blank. <laughs> um, we call them different things. But what's fun too is the construction. You start with a provisional cast on that's like, if you pretend it's at the back, um, and then you knit flat for a little while, and then you do like a giant buttonhole for the neck opening, and then you knit flat some more, and then you join with that provisional cast on and do the whole rest of the thing down in the round. Um, so that's why it's super easy to use up all the yarn. You just make it as long as you want, or keep going until you run out of yarn. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, then you're done. And all of the sizes are very, um, it's a very wide ranging, like it'll fit, a multitude yeah. of yeah sizes. it looks really good you yeah. know both like more fitted if you want or or just looser like I'm wearing it um but it it's pretty versatile um so that's a fun one all right now we're gonna go back to seeing another technique um that I use sometimes if I'm I don't know particularly lazy maybe <laughs> Um, and that is to kind of weave them in as you're knitting. Um, so yeah, we, we, we did put a link to this uh, pattern in the chat. It's yes. called Super Breezy. Yeah. And you can get it as a um, kit or you can buy the looks blanks just on its own. Yeah, yeah. We've got a, several patterns that are just great in those looks blanks because it's 750 yards of um, merino cashmere silk um and it's just like an said, it's one of our desert island yarns that we just love definitely <laughs> um, yes so i'm going to show another technique that you might want to use if you're working on a shawl and you want to um and you want to weave in the ends as you go um and this one is where you do um like I said, weave them in as you go. <laughs> so as you're knitting, you're actually going to, and I'm gonna show you both how to do it with, um, if you're a continental knitter or uh, a, a picker or a thrower. I naturally am a picker. So I go, I'm slow and awkward the other way, but I will show you. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna switch colors right now. I just have my tail and I'm gonna start knitting with the, um, with the red. Um, but I'm going to weave in this end as I go. And then um, on the next row, I'm going to, we are the next, um, like after the next two rows, I'm gonna weave in this tail, um, but I'm just gonna show you that. So right here, I started a new yarn, I have a tail. I'm gonna take care of that later. Right now I'm gonna take care of the tail that I cut. Um, 
Now, if you're going to use this color again right away, then you don't have to cut it. Then you would just like carry it up the side. And that's a whole nother subject. What I'm going to show you now is how to weave it in if you're done with it and you don't need it anymore. <laughs> um, so one way to do it is to, I kind of, I know this looks a little crazy, um, but I, I hold it in with both hands um, or sorry, uh, my words aren't coming very well here, but as I'm knitting, I'm just going to go under that strand of yarn and grab my yarn. Sorry, showing there. And next time I, I knit, I'm going to go, I'm going to leave the yarn um, under and grab the yarn and knit. And I'm going to show you this a couple of different ways. I know it seems a little bit crazy right now. Um, and then I'm going to knit and go under that yarn and grab my working yarn. And then I'm going to knit and go over that tail. Okay, and you're just going to do that for a few stitches along and that and and you can kind of, you know, pull it, but not too tight. Make sure it's still um, not tighter than the rest of your knitting, um, but you can do that a few times and then that will weave it in. And then I'm going to when I come back, I'm going to um, do the same thing so that I do get that like U turn in there. Um, but now I'm going to show you if you're a thrower um how to weave it in and so first i'm going to take my tail here and just lay it over the top of my my working yarn so then go ahead and knit the stitch okay and then you oops Sorry, that one got in there. That's not supposed to be it. Um, <clears throat> and then as you're knitting, you can kind of um, do another stitch with it under and then take your tail and throw it over. And you can every time you can actually like throw your tail over to get it kind of locked in there too. Um, I like to do it every other, but either way is good. Um, so take your tail and put it over the top of your working yarn and then just do a regular stitch. And we will take a look at that. So I'm going to stop there um, and then uh, knit the rest of the way. I'm going to knit the rest of the way. Um, and then go back because uh, I always like to do that U-turn. Some people, you know, are fine with not not doing that U-turn, but I think it really secures it in. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So right now we're in a garter stitch. Um, I mean, sorry, we're in stockinette. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be purling, and you just always want to weave that tail in on your purl side. So we'll go here. So I'm just purling up to where I see the tail. And then I'll start um, weaving it back. So, and now I see it so I can kind of throw it over my working yarn. You see there. And then just purl the stitch. And then throw it over again. And purl the stitch. And see how you're just kind of locking it in along the way. So throw it over. Dun, dun, dun. The benefit of this one is that it gets done <laughs> while you're knitting, and then you don't have a lot of um, ends to weave in. All right. All right, so throw this one over. OK. And then um, and you can see, oh, see, I didn't do it. I was doing it every other one. Maybe that's not as good. Um, it, it's better if you're, if you, every time you do it, you're throwing it over. So I'm going to go ahead and throw while purling. Um, and let's see, I missed some chats, but I'm going to uh, do the, the purling one. So again, you, you would just take your, your tail and throw it over. Um, your working yarn and then purl. Sorry, 
curl. And then take your tail and your tail and throw it over the working yarn. It slows you down, you know, for that one row, of course, but it's worth it in the end because um, then you don't have to weave in some ends. <laughs> um, so take your tail, throw it over. And curl. All right, and then just go back, you know, a, you know, two inches, I'd say an inch or two inches if you're going back and forth. Um, and that is another way, another way to do it. Um, it just some other for the um, for the throwers um, amongst us, because I'm a thrower. Um, if you've ever done two handed color work and if you're used to tacking whatever yarn you're not using at the time, it's the exact same technique. It's just that yes. you're going to be doing it every stitch instead of every three or four. And so, yeah, if you if you're good so enough, if, if yeah, visualization can be easier that way sometimes. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. So yeah, if you can hold both yarns, then yeah, you just hold that tail in one, and kind of it, it goes a lot smoother and faster. Um, and if you're a picker, you it's you know pretty easy to kind of hold hold both yarns um, and you know make sure you're kind of going under over under over. Um, but it's a really good one too. Um, and then you can always make sure, you know, leave it loose, leave it really loose, and then you can tighten it up as much as you want. So even from this side, I can, I can tighten that up a tiny bit um, and pull this and tighten it up a tiny bit, but you don't want to do it too much <laughs> because you still want, um, you know, you want your, your ends to move with the, with your knitting. You don't want it to, um, you know, get popped out or pop out, you know. Anyway, <laughs> um, just some other general tips, of course, a lot of people will say, you know, weave in your ends um, at the edge and certainly do that, um, especially like for shawls where the edge is a little bit stiffer than a less, you know, less stretchy than the shawl itself. That's a good way. Um, but sometimes it's not the best. Um, um, we're doing a knit along right now with a, um, a sweater and just because we're working with a lot of hand dyed yarns and um, we want to switch your balls, you know, as you go, um, we, we switched, we did the, um, the switching of the yarns, like a couple stitches in from the, uh, so here, I don't know if this is clear here, but this is the wrong side of my work. Um, and you have this, we have this kind of edge um, where we're putting our button band, our buttons, um, and it's a ribbed section. And so we didn't want to really disturb our edge here because it, it can show a little bit more. So instead of um, switching the yarn, you know, at the edge, we switched it, um, you know, six stitches in, which is perfectly fine to do too. So um, if you, if you're working in the same color and you need to be switching back and forth between yarns. Sorry, I hope that made sense. Um, <laughs> uh, but there's really just a lot, you know, a lot of different ways to do things. And I hope that you got some tips and, um, you know, of course there's just so much to cover if you're working with slippery yarns or if you're, um, you know, in lace. So we might be doing, you know, a, a follow on to this one. Um, one other trick is sometimes I do, um, you know, if you really are worried about things, you could split the yarn um, and um, you could split your split the tail yarn and and weave part of the split one way and part the other way and go back and forth like that. Um, what other tips am I missing? And can you think of anything? Um, I use that technique a lot um, when I use very thick yarns. Yeah. Yeah, then this, yeah. So yeah. for thick yarns, you definitely it's you want really to split it in two and <laughs> mm -hmm. because then it it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for fingering weight, even up to almost worsted, you probably don't really need to. No. Um, and you know, unless you feel like you really want it to be smooth. Um, but yeah, splitting the yarns is a great one. Um, you know, I I have been known to tie knots. <laughs> I know it's a little bit like, oh, don't do it. Um, but one, one, one 
you know, I don't know. I, I feel like sometimes there's a situation for everything. And, and then there are some things like there's a knot called the, there's a magic knot. There's also um, just different ways to join knots. And my one trick with joining knots that will freak some people out <laughs> uh, is uh, sometimes I will, if I really want that knot to occur at a certain place, like I think to myself, well, if there's a knot here, that would be fine. Then sometimes I'll knit up right to where I want that knot to occur. And then I'll cut the yarn right there. And then I'll unknit back. So then I have a long enough tail and then I'll use that magic knot. Um, and then that, then I re-knit and then that knot occurs exactly where I want it to occur. Um, so that's the, I use that one. Yeah. With slippery yarns, um, with, you know, I don't know, it just depends on, on the situation. So I hope I've given you a lot of just different ideas and, um, and, you know, helped you think about some different ways and to just empower you to be fearless and just try it out and <laughs> figure out what works. So, so thanks so much for joining us. Um, and yeah, let me know, did I miss anything, Nick, that we should cover? I'm, um, um I mean, we we could definitely do an advanced course. We could go on forever. I'm just weaving in ends. <laughs> um, but most important, though, don't forget to use the code weaving. Yes. You'll use get twenty percent off everything on the site, including use our grab code. bags, which we love. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, those grab are bags. So fun. <laughs> grab bags. So they're like a, a set that we put together. So you can't like mix and match from the grab bag. It's just one grab bag, but you get to see exactly what's in it. Um, and they, they coordinate together. Um, they so, and there's a big discount. So the grab bag itself is already discounted and then you get the 20% off that. So that's really fun. <laughs> um, yay. So thank yeah. you so much for joining us. I don't know what's our next one. Our next one is like chart, chart reading chart next, reading. Yeah, next yeah. Tuesday, <laughs> Two, Tuesday, <laughs> I'm having trouble. <laughs> thank God I wasn't presenting tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, next Tuesday. Yeah, chart reading. Yes. So, and don't forget that subjects. you need to sign up. You need to sign up um, for chart reading next week. Uh, Roxanne just put the link to sign up for chart reading next week in the chat. Um, it's not too far if you want to grab that before we close, um, because you do need to sign up, as <laughs> most of you are now aware, because you are here tonight. <laughs> yes. And you know, we haven't had any Zoom bombing, so that's a good thing. <laughs> this is, yes, this is why we do signups. <laughs> why do we do signups? <laughs> so, but thank you so much, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for joining us, and see you next week.